Hello and welcome to Sew Amelia, where I share all about making a handmade wardrobe for me and my children. Welcome to today's video, which is my makes and favourites from 2021. I hope you've all had a wonderful start to your new year. It's still December when I'm filming this, but for you watching at home, it will now be January 2022. I feel like last year sped by in a lot of ways and dragged by in a lot of others. So I'm looking forward with lots of positivity to what's to come in 2022. Now what I've got here on the rack beside me is just a roundup of some of my makes and favourites from the last year. When the pandemic started, my baby was about six months old and so I was freshly postpartum, my body was changing and as I got back to my old self, a lot of the clothes that I had before didn't fit and so that's when I really got back into sewing in a big way. So what you can see here is just a few of the me mates that I have made this year to fill up my wardrobe in a time when we've not really been able to go shopping and now that I'm making my own wardrobe I don't really want to anymore. So in 2021 I've steered clear of fast fashion as much as I can. I have bought a couple of very basic things like underwear but for the most part I have either made my own clothes or I have used thrift stores to pick up a couple of things like jeans and a couple of dresses that I have refashioned. So that's been a really, really great adventure in 2021. I've learned a lot about how to fit my body, about the clothing that I like to wear, and I'm really, really pleased with the items I have in my new made wardrobe. Now these items here are some of my favourites and some Instagram favourites as well, and I thought I would just briefly share these with you. Now, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail about each one of these pieces, otherwise we'll be here until next Christmas, but I have got videos for the majority of these pieces that I'm showing you today, so do click through to my YouTube channel after you've watched this video if you would like to, where you'll find more detail about the patterns and the fabrics that I have used for each of these pieces. So without further ado, let's get cracking. So the first make that I want to share is this By Hand London Jessica skirt, and it was made with fabric from a So Haley Jane box. When I saw this gingham, I knew that I wanted to make a skirt with it, and I have worn this so much. I wore it in the summer, teamed with a little black t-shirt that I made from the Adrienne blouse pattern, and then in the winter I have worn it with tights and jumpers and boots, and I have loved it. It has had so much wear. Uh, the only thing I would say about it now is that it is slightly too big, so when the summer comes next year I'm going to try and take it in a little bit. It's got quite a few interesting seams along the waistband here, and so that shouldn't be a problem to take that in. It was a really quick, lovely sew. There is a lot of fabric in this skirt, so it's very comfortable and swishy to wear, and definitely one of my favorite skirts from 2021. Now, the next make I'm going to share with you is one of my favorite basics from 2021, and I'm actually wearing one today. I made two of these, and these are the Megan Nielsen Rowan bodysuit. Now, I love basics. I love wearing them underneath my summer dresses when I can, and layering them up. I love wearing them on their own with jeans and I just have found these two particularly to be really useful parts of my wardrobe. Now I wasn't sure about a bodysuit at first but I actually prefer this even over my beloved Freya top because I just find that I'm not tucking it in all the time, it doesn't come untucked when I'm playing with my children on the floor, it's really comfortable to wear and I certainly pick these out of my wardrobe almost on a daily basis. I made both of these the one I'm wearing today and this one from cotton jerseys that I bought from Andrea at Beyond the Pink Door. They have worn really well, they're very comfortable, they've washed really well as well. Now I made this one with a crew neck and I played around with the stripes which I really enjoy on this one and then I made this one with a faux turtleneck. Now I really like where the neckline sits on this, it doesn't feel too close to my neck, there's lots of room and it doesn't feel too tight and restrictive. They're really, really comfortable pieces, and I'm looking forward to making a couple of these. There is a t-shirt variation, which I'm looking forward to trying in the summer. One of my favorite dress patterns that I made this year was the Bakerloo dress by Nina Lee, and I made three of these, I think, over the year, and this, I think, is one of my favorites. What I have done on this version is actually use the sleeves from the Devonport dress by Friday Pattern Company. I did find the sleeves on the Bakerloo dress sometimes just a bit too full, 
So I swapped those for the Devonport dress sleeves and then I added this lace to the collar just to make that really stand out against the bodice. The fabric I bought from Like So Amazing and it's just such a beautiful cotton poplin. I love the colours. I made it for autumn and I really think those are such autumnal colours but I've been enjoying wearing it in the winter too. So that's the Bakerloo dress by Nina Lee, one of my favourite winter dresses. Now this next dress is one I've not worn a huge amount yet. I made it just at the start of autumn and I wore it a few times before it just got a little bit cold to wear it. It is made in a viscose chalet, which is so beautiful and light to wear. And I was hoping to be able to wear it into the winter, but it just feels slightly too light. So I will definitely get a lot of wear out of this in the spring and hopefully in the summer as well. But the other reason that this is one of my favorite makes from this year is because whilst I was making this one, I also made another one at the same time. And that one I sent to my mother for her Christmas present. And I'll pop in a photograph here. I'm wearing it in the photograph because my mother and I are very similar sizes so that you can see the finished product that I did send away as a gift for her. So this is the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra dress. Now I made this one like I said in a viscose chalet which I bought from Minerva and it's a Lady McElroy print and I just think it's so beautiful. Um, I love these slightly muted colours, I think they're perfect for the autumn and I think they'll work really well in the spring and the summer too. The one I made for my mother was from a beautiful cotton poplin that I got from the rag shop. Now she lives in New Zealand and obviously it's summer there right now. So I thought a cotton poplin Lyra dress would just be perfect for a New Zealand summer's day. So my favourite make this year that I gifted was the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra dress that I gave to my mother for Christmas. This next make was a pattern hack and it was a hack of the Deborah blouse by Vicky Sews pattern and the Jessica skirt that you saw before in this gingham fabric. I simply chopped the blouse off at my natural waist and extended the waistband portion of the Jessica skirt before adding a ruffle at the bottom. And I used this beautiful cotton lawn by Lady McElroy. I think it's called Cobra Corsage and I bought that from Minerva. Now I absolutely love this dress. Because 2021 has gone in a similar direction to 2020, I haven't had a lot of wear out of it, but I did wear it when my husband and I went to the theatre for our wedding anniversary in the late summer. So that was really special to get to wear this one and I'm hoping that I'll be able to wear it again a few more times in 2022. So I couldn't choose between the last dress and this one for which has been my favourite pattern hack of 2021. So I have included them both in this video. Now I talked about this in one of my recent week in sewing videos so I won't go into too much detail but this is a combination of the patina blouse by Friday Pattern Company and the Davenport dress by Friday Pattern Company and I've hacked the two together at the waist with the lovely waist tie that is on the Davenport dress. Now I absolutely love this one, I have worn it so much already and I'm hoping I'll get a lot more wear out of it over the winter and into the spring as well. Now in 2021 I made a few jumpers but this one is definitely my favourite and this is the Juniper Cardigan by Jennifer Lauren Handmade and I made it in this gorgeous Victoria sweater knit from Minerva. Unfortunately they're out of stock of this now which is such a shame as it does look a lot like ready to wear fabric sweaters that you would get in the shops. So I absolutely love the colour of this one and it goes with so many of the things that I have made this year. It really is a very versatile cardigan and I have found myself picking it up a lot. I also really like the shape of the Jennifer Lauren cardigan with the saddle shoulder detail and if I can find another sweater knit that is like this one I would really like to make a few more of these for my wardrobe as I find them such functional but also beautiful pieces. Now 2021 was the year in which I fell in love with trousers again. Now I love wearing dresses and skirts, it's always been my preference and I think it will always be my preference. But I did want to have a go at making shorts and trousers that fit me. I have a waist of 30 inches and hips of between 41 and 42 inches. So in ready to wear I can often find trousers that fit at the waist or fit at the hips but not both. So that's where sewing is magic and I've really enjoyed making some trousers and shorts this year. But especially this pair here which were my first Persephone pants by Anna Allen and I made them in this gorgeous Robert Kaufman twill fabric from Sony Sunshine. 
I absolutely love this green colour. I often pair it up with this top here and the pink looks great with the green. I have a couple of alterations that I'd like to make to the next pair. I think I'll make them slightly bigger over the hips and I'm going to do a forward crotch adjustment just to make them fit even better. But I'm so happy with this pair of trousers and I've been wearing them so much. I don't think I've ever had a comfortable pair of trousers until these ones and I've so enjoyed wearing them. Now this next make is actually an Instagram favourite. This is the one that got the most likes on my Instagram grid this year, particularly when I showed a close-up photo of my shirred sleeve. So this was my first experiment with sharing and it certainly won't be my last. I'm not completely happy with this one, I will be honest, as I don't think I quite got the tension right on my sharing and that's made the sleeves quite tight. So after a couple of hours of wear, it becomes a little bit uncomfortable. But what I do love is the shape of the neckline, and I love sort of the blousy feel of the fabric. This is a viscose from Felicity Fabrics, and it's beautiful. And again, it's in this dark green colour, which I really, really like. I wore this a lot in the summer, but I haven't worn it so much in the winter, just because of the short sleeves, I think, uh, and the sharing. It means that they don't go so well over long sleeve tops. But I'm looking forward to wearing this again in the spring and the summer next year. So this was based on a Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress, which I hacked slightly to give it this square neckline. So that is my Instagram favourite from 2021, the Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress hack. Now because I stay at home with my children, I don't often wear blouses as I feel that they're a bit more work wear, but I do love to wear a blouse. So from time to time, I, when I cannot resist, I do make a blouse and I do often wear them with jeans and things, especially over the weekend perhaps when we go out for dinner or do something a bit more fancy than playing on the floor and doing homework and cooking tea. <laughs> but this blouse is definitely one of my two favourite blouses from 2021 and it is the Friday Company Patina Blouse and this was a Minerva make. I'm a brand ambassador for Minerva and I made this with gifted fabric from them. I made this version with the cuffs, the button-up cuffs. It's just such a lovely shirt to wear. It was such a lovely one to make. I always enjoy making Friday Pattern Company patterns. The instructions are great and I love all the finishing details that they include. So there's not much more to say about that. I've included it on a few videos as it's one I've just enjoyed so much, both to make and to wear. So one of my favorite blouses from 2021, the Patina Blouse by Friday Pattern Company. Now this is one of my other favorite blouses and this one is by Vicky Sews. It's the only Vicky Sews pattern I've sewed this year, but I have made it twice and I would love to make another one because they are really comfortable. It's a beautiful princess seamed square necked blouse and these sleeves are actually pleated, but they have a lovely puff to them with those pleats at the top. I just love this fabric with the strawberries and the buzzy bees and that came from Sew Me Sunshine. This got a lot of wear, particularly in the spring actually. It, it, it's just such a happy piece of clothing to wear and definitely one of my favourite blouses of 2021. Now when I saw the colour of this linen on the Threadquarters website, I could not resist it. And it sat in my stash for quite a little while before I found the right pattern for it. I wanted to be really careful with what I chose because I just adore the feel and the colour of this linen. So what I chose in the end was the Spring Jumpsuit by So Love Patterns. And it's a wide-legged jumpsuit. It has pockets here underneath the white waistband, really lovely deep pockets as well. And then I just love this V at the front. I was a little concerned, if I'm honest, that it would be a little low and revealing, but it's not. It sits beautifully and the fabric covers really, really nicely. I love these gathers here over the bust area. They are really super flattering. And the back is finished with an invisible zip. And then you get this beautiful little opening here before the button closure at the top. I chose to make the wide leg jumpsuit, which I really find very flattering for my particular figure. And again, I graded between sizes so that the waist is beautifully fitted. And then there's lots of room for my hips, which is great. It's a very flattering wide leg pattern. I wore it a lot to quite a few school functions at the end of the summer. And I'm very much looking forward to wearing this again when the weather warms up. So that I think will be my favorite jumpsuit from 2021. Now, another pattern that I repeated a couple of times this year was the Camden Pinafore by Nina Lee Patterns. And this is probably one of my favorite winter dresses. I find it so versatile, particularly in this color. It's a chambray from Minerva Fabrics and lined with just a static free lining also from Minerva. I love Nina Lee Patterns. I really enjoy making them. I find her instructions really helpful and easy to follow. And this particular pinafore, I really, really enjoy making. 
I make a size 10 bodice graded out to a 12 at the waist and then I grade out again to a 14 at the hips. The only change I make to this pattern is I have found it comes up quite short. So I always add a couple of inches to the hem which brings it to just above my knees which is the length that I prefer. I really like this v-neck here, I think it's a really lovely detail and in the winter I often wear it with these Rowan bodysuits or my Freya top or with this patina blouse which looks really beautiful paired with the pinafore. So yes, Camden pinafore, one of my favourite pinafores from 2021 uh, because it's just such a lovely pattern to make and I find it really easy to wear and I certainly reach for it a lot in my me made wardrobe. Now in 2021 I had my first foray into coat making and I started with the Megan Nielsen Hervea coat. Now I used a beautiful quilted shearling fabric from Fabric Godmother and some Liberty Cotton Lawn to make the binding that I had left over from a dress of my daughter's. I absolutely love this coat. I love the deep pockets, there's certainly room for everything, sticks, stones, when you're on a walk at the park for the children, as well as cell phones and keys, <laughs> so all the essentials. I chose to add the hanging loop here and then at the back I added one of my favourite sewing labels from Little Rosy Cheeks and it just says Me Made. So that's a very lovely relaxed fit coat that I wore a lot in the autumn and I'm sure it will get a lot more wear again as we head into the warmer spring weather. So that's my Hervea coat, my favourite coat that I made in 2021. So another skirt that I made in 2021 was the Megan Nielsen Bromby skirt. This is another one of my favourite woven skirt patterns. I love the deep pockets and I love the curved waistband as it sits really nicely on my waist and it's lovely and fitted so it goes really well with the blouses and cardigans that I've got in my wardrobe. And again, very versatile. I wore this a lot in the spring and summer and I'm wearing it a lot in the winter as well. So I always enjoy makes that can be worn in all seasons. Now I think my favourite sweatshirt pattern from 2021 has to be the Tilly and the Buttons Billy pattern. I've made it in a sweater, I've also made three sweater dresses from the Billy pattern. I really really like it. It's a very comfortable sweatshirt, it's a very comfortable sweatshirt dress and I have amended the pattern now so that it really fits me so well and I can whip one of these up quite quickly. So it's become a very versatile, quick and easy pattern and very much a tried and tested one in my wardrobe. This is made from a beautiful sweatshirting from Atelier Brunette and it's been a much worn piece in my wardrobe. It's just such a lovely casual and relaxed piece for when we have a day at home or a day at the park and I reach for it at least once a week. So very definitely my top sweatshirt of 2021 was this Tilly in the Buttons Billy in this gorgeous Atelier brunette sweatshirting. Now one of my favourite skirts of the summer has to be the Below the Corfi Manuka skirt. Now this pattern company is based in New Zealand and I absolutely love their patterns. I make a lot of them for my daughter but I have made a couple of them for myself as well and the Monica skirt is one that I have made at least twice. Now this one I made from another So Haley Jane fabric and I bought some beautiful buttons from the Swagman's Daughter and I used red piping just to highlight this lovely faux button placket and the beautiful deep pockets again pockets that hold all sorts of treasures wonderful pockets now what I love about the Monica skirt is that it has a flat fronted waistband which is really flattering and then at the back it has elastic hooray so <laughs> it's both flattering and very comfortable to wear and it's one I reach for often in the summer I just pair it with a t-shirt or again my red juniper cardigan and it's an easy one to just pop on for a day with the children so my favourite summer skirt pattern has to be the Monica skirt by Below the Kofi. Now a make that surprised me this year is the Paper Theory Zadie jumpsuit. I saw this on so many people but I really wasn't sure if the shape and the style would be flattering on my figure. But when I saw this viscose come through in a So Haley Jane box, I knew that it needed to be a Zadie jumpsuit. So I decided to jump on the bandwagon and give it a try and I am so glad that I did. I absolutely love the fabric, I love the bright colours and I adore the relaxed comfortable fit of the Zadie. I think my only change would be that the next time I make it I'm going to bring the waist up by about an inch just so it sits more at my natural waist. I heard quite a few people ask me how I stopped problems of gaping on the Zadie because it does sometimes gape a little bit here. All I did was I added a popper just where the fabric naturally wants to fall over my bust area 
So when I'm wearing it, I don't think you can see that there is a popper there just holding that closed. It just gives me a bit more confidence to feel comfortable wearing that when I'm running around after my children to know that nothing is going to open up and reveal things that it oughtn't. So my favourite surprise make from 2021, or surprise success I should say, from 2021 was this Zadie jumpsuit by Paper Theory Patterns. Now this dress was one I recently made and it was a pattern test for Stitched in Wonderland and it's their new Daydreamer dress. And again, this is one that I have just worn on repeat since I finished it. I absolutely love these buttons, which are from Ethel and Joan. And the fabric is such a cozy, comfortable viscose from Andrea, again at Beyond the Pink Door. I love these bright pink spots. And again, I have worn it with this Roman bodysuit. And I've also paired it with a black turtleneck that I have in my wardrobe already. It has lovely deep pockets. It was a very quick make. I really like the bias binding around the neckline of this and I decided to add a waist tie just to bring it in a little around the waist. I've just found this to be such a breezy, easy piece in my me made wardrobe. I reach for it often because it's so comfortable and I really enjoyed both making and I've enjoyed wearing this one. It's definitely been a dress that I've worn a lot over the winter and I'm looking forward to wearing it in the springtime as well when the weather warms up. Now this is a beautiful dress from Homer and Howells, it's their Ingrid dress and I won't go into too much detail on this one as there is a whole video on this which is the most recent video of mine all about my festive week in sewing where you can see me making this dress over the Christmas week. I absolutely love the Ingrid dress, this is the second one I've made this year, it is such a comfortable dress to wear but I also love the feature of these asymmetric lines at the front and this horizontal bust dart. I just think it's such a lovely dress to wear and I love the finishing on it as well. It's finished with a facing on the inside here and then it finishes with a button across here so there's no zips. Apart from this button to close it at the top of the neck, there are no other buttons or zippers or fastenings. So that's really lovely. I actually sized down in this pattern. It is quite a roomy, blousy fit, which I do enjoy, but I did size down at least one size. But this is very definitely my favorite party dress of 2021, the Homer and Howells Ingrid. This is a beautiful color blocked gingham dress that I made at the end of the spring going into the summer, and I love it. I love the different ginghams, the color of the different ginghams, and I really like the style of this dress. This is the Deer and Doe Orchidee dress and it has this lovely V front here and these bridle buttons at the front. It does also have a zip in the side to help you get in as these buttons really are just for show. And then there's a full gathered skirt. This was such a fun one to make. I really enjoyed playing with the different colors of the gingham. And again, I wore this one a lot in the summer as it's just very easy and breezy to pop on and wear. This pattern has to be probably my most worn pattern of 2021. I'm wearing one today and here is another one and this is the Rosary Apparel Hazel Dress. I absolutely love this pattern. I love the square bodice with the little straps. I love the darts here and the bust. They just seem to fit my shape really well and I really really like this full gathered skirt. I made another one in a rust viscose linen and I reach for that on a weekly basis. This one is definitely my favourite one from the summer, made with these really fun prints from Makawa and this one here is made from an ECAT cotton that I got from Itokri. I wear these all the time, they're definitely one of my most worn makes, they're very very comfortable and I think very flattering. They're also very nice on a hot day as they are fitted but they're not too tight so there's enough room in there to make them comfortable and this one was just so much fun to sew up with the seaside print. Now one of my favourite fabrics to sew and to wear this year actually is a Tencel modal jersey. Now this one comes from Guthrie Garni. It was beautiful to sew with and oh my goodness it is so comfortable to wear. I absolutely love it. This is a Kylo wrap dress by Named Patterns. I made it with short sleeves and I actually shortened it to be just on my knee as I think that's a length that I prefer. It's just such a lovely easy dress to wear. You can make the wrap as loose or as tight as you like and this jersey is just so comfortable so definitely one of my favourite fabrics from 2021. I hadn't sewn much with jersey before this year and it's certainly something that I've learned more about as my sewing journey has progressed this year but this one is definitely a favourite in my wardrobe and I did wear it a lot in the spring and the summer. Another favourite jersey make definitely has to be this iris t-shirt 
by forget-me-not patterns. I really love the detail of the pleated sleeves and again this fabric is a tensile modal jersey again from Guthrie and Garni. I just love how soft this fabric feels to wear so this was definitely reached for a lot in the summer and I wore it a lot with my Brumby skirt which I showed you earlier. So this is the forget-me-not iris tee, definitely one of my top t-shirts from 2021. One of my favourite summer dresses has to be this Q dress, again by Nina Lee Patterns. I made it in this beautiful rayon, rifle paper company rayon from Sister Mantaka, which is called Strawberry Fields, and this is in the ivory colourway. I made the cold shoulder option, but left off the cold shoulders as I don't really enjoy wearing cold shoulder sleeves, and instead I added a ruffle, which I really like, as it just gives me a little bit more coverage to make it feel comfortable. But it is just such a relaxed dress to wear while still looking quite dressy. I wore this to a couple of lunches out with family over the summer and it felt dressy. But I made sure that there was a little bit of room in this waist seam just to make it really comfortable. I do still need to run around after my children even if we are at a nice lunch. So this is probably my favourite summer dress from 2021. And we didn't get much of a summer here in England this year, so I'm hoping that the weather is good to us this year and I can get a lot more wear out of this Q dress by Nina Lee Patterns. My favourite item from my Make 9 this year was the Hughes dress by Friday Pattern Company. Now, I did the Make 9 at the very beginning of the year when I was still quite new to restarting my sewing again. And I wasn't 100% sure what I really wanted to wear or what I enjoyed wearing or what my style was. So I popped a lot of things on there that I didn't make. But one of the things that I did make, and I made two of in fact, was the Hughes dress by Friday Pattern Company. And I really like this pattern. This is made in a beautiful viscose linen from the rag shop. And I just love it with these pineapples. It's so much fun to wear. And I even found pineapple buttons on Minerva to go with the dress. And I really like the way that the back is done up with this tie here that you can obviously bring in or let out as much as you like. This was a lovely one to make. There are a lot of pattern pieces to keep track of, but once you've got your head around that, it's a lovely one to sew up. So my favourite item from my Make 9 this year has to be this Hughes dress by Friday Pattern Company. Finally, my favourite Instagram challenge make from 2021 was this yellow dress. Now I sewed this for So What If I Sews? challenge in March which was for endometriosis awareness and we were all asked to sew something in yellow which is the colour for endometriosis support. I had this yellow gingham and I had initially planned to make something for my daughter but I realised that I had just enough to squeeze out an avid seamstress day dress. Now again this is another pattern that I've made a few times this year and I hacked this a little bit. There's no waistband on the original day dress so I added a waistband which I slightly curved and I trimmed the bodice by about two or three inches so that it finished just above my natural waist. And then I added on the skirt from the day dress. And then I made the most changes here at the back. So I added a zip to go up to the bottom of the waist here and an open back, which I just brought in with a little button here and at the top. So there's a bit of an opening at the back there, which is really lots of fun to wear in the summer. And I was surprised by how much I enjoyed wearing the yellow. I didn't think it was one of my colours, but I really enjoyed wearing this and it was quite happy and bright in the spring and summer. So definitely one of my favourite makes that I initially made for a challenge and wasn't sure I would wear a lot, but ended up wearing all the time over the spring and summer. So those are my makes and favourites from 2021 that I made for myself. I'm going to share a couple of my favourites that I made for my daughter. But if sewing for children isn't your thing, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. But if you do enjoy sewing for children, do keep watching and I will share some of my favourite things that I made for her. So my favourite pattern for my daughter this year definitely has to be the Peony Patterns Wattle Dress. It's a simple jersey dress with a fitted bodice and a gathered full circle skirt. She loves this dress. She often asks me if she can wear her ballerina dress. And I made this one with three quarter sleeves. She has another one with long sleeves, which she wears often in the winter. And then last spring, she had a long sleeve one that I just chopped off to make it short sleeved. And she wore that all through the spring and summer as well. So I find this such a comfortable, versatile dress for a little girl. And I've certainly made a lot of these. 
This gorgeous ballerina fabric came from Felicity Fabrics and she just loves it. So that's really nice that it's one that she asks to wear. This is another Peony Patterns dress and I made it in a beautiful cotton jersey from Amy Elizabeth Fabrics and again it's another one she's worn a lot. It's very similar to the wattle dress except it's got this squared off neckline and lovely puffed sleeves. So two Peony Patterns dresses that I absolutely loved making, very quick and easy and she's really enjoyed wearing them. Now if you've watched my channel for a while you know that I enjoy making heirloom dresses for my daughter and I really like doing hand sewing and smocking. And this was one of the smocked dresses that I made for her this year, certainly one of my favourites. It's made in this Liberty Tana Lawn and I bought that from Minerva and then I smocked it in these lovely bright pink colours with the little rosebuds as well. Now what I do with her dresses is I do make them the size bigger than she is. So this is actually an age three dress and it is quite wide across the waist for her, but I can bring that in with the ties so that it fits her nicely across the waist. The other thing I do with these dresses is make them with a really lovely big hem. This is rolled up twice so that I can let that down as she grows. So she'll hopefully get a couple of years at least of wear out of this. Now this is the Children's Corner Lee pattern. It's a beautiful pattern for a simple smocked dress for a little girl. Definitely one of my favorite smocked frocks for her from 2021. One of my favorite summer dresses for her was this Peony Patterns Posy dress. Now I really love this dress with its feature cutouts in the bodice and the skirt. And I decided to just have some fun with this. I actually used an old Ikea bed sheet and duvet set that I had and I trimmed it with this mustard pom-pom trim. I had a lot of fun making this one and she loves to wear this one in the summer. She asked for a lot and I would love taking her down to the beach in the park because she discovered pockets in this dress and would fill them with all sorts of treasures that we would look at together when we got home from outings. So definitely one of her favorites and one of mine as well. A lot of fun to sew and, uh, and for her to wear the Peony Patterns Posy dress. Now, one of my other favorites for her this year was this romper that I made by Blue Ribbon Heirloom. It's such a lovely pattern company with really traditional clothing for children. And I just love the features on this romper. I love this ruffle across the bodice piece here. I decided to embroider the first letter of her name on the front here, which I think adds a really pretty detail. And then the romper is gathered in to the bottom of this bodice piece here. And there are little ruffles across the leg openings as well. It's finished here with straps, which I decided to button on a gorgeous romper for a little girl from Blue Ribbon Heirloom Designs. And of course, I couldn't help but include my latest make for my daughter, which is this beautiful Christmas velvet party dress with the smocked lace collar. This is definitely, I think, my favorite make for her this year. It was so lovely seeing her in this on Christmas Day. It just looked so festive and Christmassy, and I'm hoping that she might get a bit more wear out of it this winter as her party dress. It was a lovely, lovely one to make. Again, it was a children's corner pattern. It's their Victoria dress, and I used the long sleeved pattern piece in that, which has a beautiful finish here with the wristband at the bottom of the gathered sleeve. I sewed some buttonholes on my new machine which went in beautifully. I was going to hand sew them but I was worried about the velvet fraying as this velvet did fray quite a lot so I ended up doing them on my new machine and they went in beautifully. And then I finished it with these beautiful big ties at the back for a lovely statement bow at the back. <laughs> so if you've watched to the end, thank you so much. This is definitely one of my longer videos, but I hope that you enjoyed seeing some of my makes and favorites from 2021. If you are a regular viewer, thank you so much for following my sewing journey this year. It's been great to have you watching my videos and chatting with me in the comments. I've really enjoyed meeting you in the comments and talking with you about different patterns and the makes that I have shared. If you are new here and you would like to follow my sewing journey in 2022, please do click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you will be made aware of when I publish new videos. If you have enjoyed seeing this video today, please do give it a thumbs up. I would so appreciate that. Thank you again for watching. I hope you've had a happy start to your 2022 and that you have a wonderful week full of happy sewing. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.